how to think about agent frameworks and a very detailed comparison of different agentic frameworks. This is the topic for today's video. It is based on a blog on a blog post that was published by the Langchain team. For those of you who don't know, uh, Langchain are offering um, agentic. It's an agentic. It's a framework for building agentic workflows. And in this uh, blog post, I think it was written by the founder. Um, they go into detail about the difference between agents and workflows, differences uh, between uh, frameworks. And they also share a very interesting comparison between different frameworks, which I will share in the end. As you can see, this comparison is pretty popular. Um, I guess that it's because many, many people, when they just start building workflows or agentic workflows, they are not sure which uh, framework uh, they should uh, use, or perhaps they should use a no-code tool, um, or maybe they should just uh, write their own um, framework with Python without using these layers of abstractions. So let's uh, dive uh, into this uh, blog post. At the end, I will show you the TLDR because the whole point is going through everything. Obviously, if you're interested, I will drop a link to their um, blog post in the video description and you can just read it on your own. Um, at the beginning, he shares the, his perspective about what is an agent because there are different definitions of what is an agent. Um, OpenAI published um, a thought leadership um, blog post about agents and they says that agents are systems that independently, in, independently accomplish tasks on your behalf. While on the other hand, Anthropic also published something similar and I think I did a video about it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did a video about this. And they give a slightly different uh, definition. So agent can be defined in several ways. Some customers define agent as fully autonomous systems that operate independently over extended periods using various tools to accomplish complex tasks. Others use the term to describe more pres prescriptive implementations that follow predefined workflows. At Anthropic, we categorize all these variations as agentic systems, but draw an important architectural distinction between workflows and agents. This is very important. Workflows are systems where LLMs and tools are orchestrated through predefined code paths. So they have many guardrails, limitations, and constraints. Agents, and this is why they are more reliable. Agents, on the other hand, are systems where LLMs dynamically direct their own processes and tool usage, maintaining control over how they accomplish tasks. So this is very important. And they also have a graph here, but we will uh, get to this graph in a moment. So moving forward, as you probably know, each agent has, can use, uh, diff has different prompts, different models that they can use, and uh, different tools, different memory, etc. Now, in Anthropic, uh, in the Anthropic uh, um, blog post, they said that you should always strive to build the simplest solution possible and only increase complexity when needed. So very often, more often than not, and I discuss this in many other uh, videos of mine, once you add an LLM or even an agent, once you add LLM to your automation, you add a stochastic component to your automation, which decreases reliability because the output is random based on the temperature and based on the prompt. So you don't have 100% control of what will be the output. Now, if you add agents to the mix instead of just LLM calls, so it's even going to be more, um, it is more dynamic, but it is also more random and less predictable. As, as I said here, when more complexity is warranted, workflow offer predictability and consistency for well-defined tasks whereas agents are a better option when flexibility and model-driven de decisions are making uh, are needed, decision-making are needed at scale. So before committing to building an agent, validate that your use case can meet these criteria clearly, otherwise deterministic uh, solution would be better. Now, uh, the thing that is hard about building agents, is it's one thing to build agents uh, for a YouTube video or as a demo, but when you want to build for production something that is reliable, it is becoming very hard. And he shares this here. The tricky part is exactly that, making it reliable. 
So they did a survey of agent builders a few months ago and asked them what is your biggest limitations of putting more agents in production. And the number one response by far was performance quality. So not too many people say about cost, safety concerns, latency, etc. It's mostly about reliability and, and making sure that the performance is, um, the, the output is actually valuable. So why do LMs mess up? We discussed this, the model is not good enough. This is very often. So as time will go by, the models will improve and the output will be more predictable and better. And he makes the, the hypothesis that because the context that is being passed to the model isn't good enough in each stage, and this is uh, what causes um, the output to be um, actually not as good as intended because there is not enough relevant and accurate context. So from their experience, they see um, that these are the reasons. So incomplete or short system message, vague user input, not having access to the right tools. The agent doesn't have access to the right tools. The agent might have access to the right tools, but the descriptions of the tools are written poorly. So the agent doesn't know which tools to select because you know, agents select tools dynamically based on the description, not passing in the right context or formally formatted tool responses. So these are, this is very interesting. Now he discusses the difference between workflows versus agents. And I like, I really like this chart. So workflows are very predictable, but they don't have agency. And if you want to give more agency, you need to build agents. But then as you can see, the predictability goes uh, down. Now over here, he has like a, a framework that I liked. Um, a framework of analyzing framework. Basically it says, uh, you have different um, four different states. So basically a low flow, a low flow framework is beginner friendly and easy to get started. A high flow framework is a framework with a high flow, means that it has a steep learning curve and requires significant knowledge or expertise to begin with using it. Now, if we uh, discuss the, the ceiling, so a low ceiling uh, is a framework that has limitations on what can be accomplished, although um, it can, if it has a, a low flow, it can be very beginner friendly. You can start uh, building agentic uh, workflows very fast, but it might have a low ceiling. So your scale and potential is limited. And we also have a high ceiling, which is, stands for a framework that offers extensive capabilities and flexibility for advanced use cases. Basically it goes with you. So ideally we want to have a low floor. So a beginner friendly framework and a high ceiling. So he says workflow frameworks offer a high ceiling, but come with a high flow. You have to write a lot of agent logic yourself. Agent, uh, agentic uh, frameworks are low flow, but low ceiling, easy to get started with, but not enough for trivial use cases. Now uh, he says that Langraph aims to have uh, aspects that are low flow, but also high ceiling. Then he discusses the difference between declarative and non-declarative uh, frameworks which we will cover, uh, we will see the comparison in a moment. And then he discusses different uh, agentic abstractions. What is um, the meaning of, of abstractions, which uh, frameworks have has a abstraction and which don't. Um, now he discusses, now we answer some very uh, common questions. So what is the value of a framework? Because I also have in my YouTube videos, many people comment and say, uh, why wouldn't I just build this on my own? Why do I need Core AI? Why do I need AG2? So frameworks are gener gener generally useful because they contain useful abstractions, which make it easy to get started and provide a common way for engineers to build, making it easier to onboard and maintain projects. As mentioned above, these are real downsides to agent ab abstractions as well. For most agent frameworks, this is the sole value they provide. Short-term memory. Most agentic applications today involve some sort of multi-turn, e.g. Chat, co chat component. Long-term memory, uh, while still early, he is very bullish on agentic system learning from their experiences. So self-optimizing and also learning from the past. Now, two uh, interesting distinctions that I liked. I obviously knew about the human in the loop, but I never heard about this term, human on the loop. So 
human in the loop stands for um, basically the ability to have a human component in the discussion. So examples include getting feedback from user, approving a tool call, or editing uh, tool call arguments. On the other hand, a human on the loop is basically a, a layer of QA. So be besides allowing the user to affect the agent in its running, it can also be useful to allow the user to inspect the agent's trajectory trajectory after the fact and even go back to earlier steps and then rerun with changes from there and this is, is something that uh, they obviously uh, provide built in streaming is basically it's probably straight, pretty straightforward debugging observ observability so they are offering langsmith for doing this fault tolerance uh, and optimization so let's see what else was interesting over here So over here, he speaks about what he believes OpenAI got wrong in their um, blog post. I'm not going to cover this, but I suggest that if you're interested, that you do. And over here, he has a comparison of the agentic frameworks. Before we cover, we go to the comparison, let's cover the conclusion. The hard part of building reliable agentic systems is making sure the LLM has appropriate context at each step. This includes both controlling the exact context that goes into the LLM, as well as running the appropriate steps to generate relevant content. Agenting systems consist of both, both workflows and agents and everything in between. It is a spectrum, it's not a dichotomy. Most agenting frameworks are neither declarative or imperative orchestration frameworks, but rather just a set of agent abstractions. Agent abstraction, abstractions can make it easy to get started, but they can often obfuscate and make it hard to make sure the LM has the appropriate context at each step. This is why it's better. I mean, it is a benefit to using uh, agent abstractions or agentic frameworks that are open source because then you can get under the hood and understand what's going on. Agenting systems of all shapes and sizes all benefit from the same set of helpful features which can be provided by a framework or built from scratch. So memory, tool calling, long-term memory, human in the loop, human, human on the loop, etc. Uh, and Langraph is best thought of as, as he uh, defines Langraph or says that Langraph is best thought of as an orchestration framework with both declarative and imperative APIs with a series of agent ab ab abstractions built on top. Now to the comparison. Over here, we have a very detailed comparison that he did and it's being updated by members of the community regarding the features of each uh, agentic framework. So we have, for example, Langraph is, uh, is a workflow orchestration framework. It has agent abstractions. It has multi-agent abstractions. It has declarative API. It does have short-term memory. It does have long-term memory, human in the loop, human on the loop, streaming abilities no optimization, no code interpreter, and a tracing platform, and a studio, no load code uh, builder, and does have fault tolerance. For example, uh, we also have Kuwait AI, which is a very popular uh, framework, and he claims that it doesn't have, it's not a workflow orchestration framework, it's more like an agent abstraction. It does have multi-agent abstractions, etc., etc. I'm not going to go over all uh, the columns and all the rows, but I think this is a, an excellent spreadsheet that uh, will allow you to make a, a more, um, a, more a, a better, more informed decision regarding which uh, agentic framework you should use. Obviously, it was published by the Landgraf um, team, so it might be biased, but I'm assuming on the other hand that they uh, are doing the best they can in order to become objective uh, or, or at least being as objective as possible. So yeah, I think this is a very good resource. Uh, I still prefer the AG2 framework for building because I think it's uh, specifically the features that they are using are the most innovative. But on the other hand, I must admit that I didn't give uh, Langraph a good enough uh, chance, which I'm going to do after reading this blog post. Um, the other frameworks that are pretty famous that I've used in the past is QAI, which I also uh, like, but um, for me it feels very simplistic. Some people might like the simplicity. I prefer um, having, uh, as I said, a higher ceiling and more control. 
um, but you know it's always context dependent and it depends on what you need to build what is your technical skills etc yes that's pretty much it for today i hope you enjoyed this video um, i highly recommend that you read this whole blog post it's pretty comprehensive they also have very interesting case studies and more blog posts here so this is an excellent resource um, yeah that's it besides this if you enjoyed this video obviously like and subscribe leave your comment below with your feedback if you haven't uh, done so yet so please make sure to check out my newsletter about ai uh, automations and agents it is called nofluff.online you can find the description in the you can find the link in the video description uh, yeah that's it until next time guys keep on automating